I am totally ready to get into the kitchen. I had a weekend of Saturday. I was gone. I did not have to cook at all. Sunday, I wanted to cook, and then my meat just wasn't thawed in enough time, so we ended up just making a quick, pulling something quick out of the freezer, uh, you know, like just a quick meal kind of thing, um, and we did that. And here we are. My meat is thawed. I am ready to cook. Welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life. I'm so glad that you're here spending time in my kitchen with me. I hope that I can um, maybe show you something new if you're brand new here. Maybe these are all things you've seen before if you've been here for a while. And here is what's on the list for today. First off, I have a little bit of oil going in my cast iron Dutch oven over here. I have two pounds of ground venison and I'm going to make chili. You guys all know Warren asks for chili constantly, so it's been a while. I'm going to make chili. For tonight's supper, though, I'm making chicken fajita pizza. I did have a request. I don't remember. I'd have to go look, and that would take up some extra time right now that I just don't want to take. But somebody had requested um, to see me make pizza dough, pizza crust, and so I thought this would be a great thing to do since I have the chicken strips already thawed. So I'm going to get some pizza dough going for chicken fajita pizza. It's also Holy Week. And so I, Warren has been talking about wanting to make um, unleavened bread. It's just something that we do every year this week. pulling out my garbage can, setting it next to me. I like to keep it handy so that I'm not constantly having to open up the cupboard. And it just helps me if I have the garbage there, I can just keep things clear and try and try to keep the kitchen somewhat clean when I'm cooking. I tend, whoa, messy hair, messy cook. <laughs> I tend to be kind of, kind of a messy cook, I think, just because I'm always doing so many different things and Anyway, I feel like I'm in a rush and then I just don't take time to clean up as I go. Although the goal is to always clean up as I go. As I go. So let's see if I can make that happen today. Divide that by that. Look at that. Yeah. This chicken is already cut into strips, but they're pretty thick. And so I'm actually just kind of uh, cubing it up. I think that's just going to work better for on the pizza. Usually I start with chicken breasts that aren't sliced, so then I can just slice them as thin as I want. But these were a little tricky. I was trying to slice them thinner, and I don't, well, I don't know. I guess I guess it works okay, but that was just taking a lot more time, and I'd rather just just kind of cube it up because remember this is a pizza. You don't want to have too enormous of pieces on the pizza because you want to be able to you know actually eat it, like take a bite and not have the chicken falling all over the place. I have a lot more than just a half pound of chicken, which if you were just making a small pizza using the, you know, using a refrigerated pizza crust, you don't need a whole lot of chicken. I'm going to be making two bigger pizzas or maybe one really big pizza and I might just have leave some chicken off to the side um, for... I know that like Joe is going to like to have just extra chicken, not necessarily on the pizza. I also have fajita seasoning that I made up a while back. Oh yeah, it's getting even a little bit like it needs to be shook up a little. Rather than use the garlic, the chili powder, the salt, and the pepper, I'm actually just going to use this fajita seasoning. So I'm going to use one, two, I'm going to use on here, I'm going to use probably two tablespoons of the fajita seasoning on this amount of chicken. But if you do not have a fajita seasoning pouch or homemade mix, whew, that's, that's some spice to it, then just use the spices that are listed in the recipe. They're just, they're, they're perfect just like that. But since I have that, I just don't want that to go to waste. I'm going to mix it around. So all the pieces get nice and coated. 
Oh yeah, two tablespoons is a good amount for this chicken here, which is over two pounds, about two and a quarter pounds. I am going to put a little extra black pepper in here. Since I have so much chicken, I'm going to use my really big cast iron here. Just kind of coat it with oil. I'm going to let the oil uh, get really hot. And once it gets really hot and it coats the whole bottom, I'm going to add the chicken and just get it browning while I get the pepper and the onion ready. I just cut up a half an onion. That's gonna be enough for our pizza. And then also I have some frozen uh, diced green peppers. I would prefer to have like, you know, julienne or slices of green peppers, but this is gonna work just as well. And you know why? Because I already have them cut up and they're in my freezer and I wanna use them up. Next up, I need to add two cans of kidney beans. I'm gonna drain off some of the liquid, but I'm not gonna rinse these. I also need to add two cans of tomato soup. But guess what, I don't have any tomato soup. Go figure that out. So I do have some home canned tomato soup, but I like that with grilled cheese. I really don't like that in the chili. Um, and so I don't wanna use that. I would, I would rather, since we're not gonna eat this till tomorrow, um, or potentially Thursday. I would much rather just pick up a couple cans of tomato soup. I do have to uh, get into town uh, sometime today. I will be doing some errands tomorrow so I can pick up some tomato soup at another time and add it then. It'll be no big deal. What's going on, Maria? <laughs> what? I just wondered what was going on. <laughs> um, I'm doing this blindfold thing. Oh, okay. So I'm waiting for you to check my math. Okay. I don't know. I still have the burners on. I'll check your math when I turn off the burners, okay? Alright. Alright, one it's burner. Here. One burner turned oh, off. And the second burner turned off. It's hot in here, but it works. Also going in, four beef bouillon cubes. A couple of good dashes. There we go. You know what? That's basically empty. So let's just put the last couple drips in. Need to do four tablespoons of chili powder. And two teaspoons of cumin. This is a tablespoon, and I'm just going to almost fill it. There we go. This is thrilling to me. I'm going to empty all three of these bottles of ketchup. When I get down to where there's this much ketchup in the bottom of a bottle, and you know, you just you cannot get that out for you know, a burger or a hot dog or something like that, I save it. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to this, just enough to like loosen it up, pour it out. And that is what I do. So when it says a quarter cup or whatever for um, of ketchup, I just put some water and do that. This one, and I'm doing a double batch, so this will work out great. I'll have plenty between those two plus this, and that will be enough for me today. All right, so I just literally turned everything off on the stove and I just had to get outside. It is so beautiful. I mean, it's saying that it's about 56 before it was actually reading 58, 59. It is just lovely. So I turned everything off. It was at a fine stage to do that. I'm back now. Just, I'm renewed. It felt so good to get outside and I thought I was actually gonna go for a walk. I ended up cleaning up the yard and the kids were outside and it was just, it was just great. So I'm back in, I'm gonna make thin crust. Let me show you guys here. I'm going to make thin crust pizza dough. What I'm gonna do in here is I'm going to put one and an eighth cups of warm water. I need a tablespoon of yeast, a scant half teaspoon of sugar, 
we're just going to stir that up. Set that aside in this bowl here. I'm going to do two cups. This is all-purpose flour. And then I need about five-eighths of a cup. So a little over a half, not quite two-thirds. That looks good. I need some salt, three-fourths of a teaspoon, so I have a nice hefty half teaspoon. Just going to mix that up. It takes a few minutes, about eight minutes or so, for the yeast to activate. So I'm just going to wash up some grapes here. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. Wash up some grapes. Take them off the stem, put them in a bowl, put them out for supper tonight. All right, it's been plenty of time. So I'm going to pour in all of this frothy yeast yeasty water. Okay, at this point, it kind of smells like Play-Doh. And it's kind of dry. And that's normal. I'm just kind of kneading it in the bowl a little bit here to try to get any of those crumbs right there. I kind of want those to get attached to the whole ball of dough. And let's turn that a little bit. I have some olive oil on my counter. I might have to move you back a bit. There we go. And I, I set it on the olive oil and now I'm just gonna bring it over here. Kind of knead it for a little while. Couple minutes. So now comes the part where I have to decide. This is a pretty big piece of dough, and I do have a I do have a large pizza pan. This here is a dough roller. It's from Pampered Chef. It was a gift to me from my aunt a, so, so long ago. I, I would think probably one of the first couple of years that I was married. Anyway, it comes in handy, but if you don't have one, just use a rolling pin or just use your hands. It, that works too. this big piece of dough picked up, set it on my pizza pan over here, unfold it quickly before it sticks. I have to work pretty quick here. Whoa, and I have it up on a bowl. I got all kinds of things just, this is waiting for a disaster. <laughs> And lift and tug and I want this to go all the way to the very edge of this pizza pan. All right that's what it looks like now. I'm gonna get my spot cleaned up here get the other ingredients out and I'll be right back. So on top of the well, I keep wanting to call this cookie dough on top of the pizza crust I'm gonna put about a cup of salsa that doesn't look like quite enough. I'm going to get that spread out and then I'm going to top it with my chicken mixture, some cheese, some more chicken mixture, and some more cheese. oven preheated right now to 500 degrees so be prepared if you have any if you have like a, a pizza that has already dripped on the bottom it's gonna get smoky <laughs> Thank you. 
So I just took the chicken fajita pizza out of the oven. It was at 500 degrees. I always start with 10 minutes and then I can go a little bit longer. I watch it really carefully because at 500, the cheese can um, start to burn pretty quick. But this was in for, let's see, 10, 12, like 13 minutes. And I mean, the bottom crust, it looks, it looks good. I'm really, really excited to eat this tonight. <laughs> We're gonna put some salt, uh, you can put extra salsa and chicken? sour cream. Yep, chicken. Chicken fajita pizza. Serve it up. <laughs> you can put sour cream, salsa. Uh, does this have a lot of peppers and onions? Not a lot of peppers and onions, just a little bit. It's the next day now, and finally the chili is all ready. Maria, what what is that all about? What? <laughs> what else are you going to eat? Bread. Okay. So today I had to pick up some tomato soup, and then I also made uh, elbow macaroni. Wait, you know what? This isn't the actual spoon, honey, because look at you won't get any of the any of the soup. Let's use this ladle. There you go, Joe. What the heck? Okay, talk. Look at that. You want me to talk? You yes. talk. No, uh, you. 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 <laughs> we don't have anything to say. I'm just watching you dish up your chili. And then we're also having what I just call Aldi hot bread. It comes in a package right by all the in the bread aisle. And I pop them in the freezer, and then I just put them. <laughs> That's pretty stout bread. <laughs> that wow. Pretty crunchy. Delicious. But then I, I put it in bread. the oven when it's still frozen at 300 degrees, and I just let it go until I remember to take it out. And maybe it's it. Yummy. Maybe it. Yeah, you know, I might have to go get the chainsaw. <laughs> maybe I should have taken it out sooner. So the bottom's pretty crunchy, oh. but it's good. It's another day now, and I'm finally getting to the unleavened bread. So what I have in here is two cups of whole wheat flour. I keep this in the freezer because it does have a tendency to go rancid much faster than white flour. So just a, just a pointer for you. That's, that's how I can keep wheat flour around for a lot longer. I'm going to do a half teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of white sugar, Six tablespoons of brown sugar, but it doesn't need to be packed. Three-fourths teaspoon of baking soda. I'm going to stir this together, and then I'm going to put in, then I'm going to cut in two tablespoons of vegetable oil. So this is two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I have one egg. I was filming. <laughs> You're making a lot of bread. I am. And the last thing is a half cup of boiling water. I'm going to get that mixed in. And sometimes you have to add some more water because you really want to do it until it'll kind of roll so you can kind of get it to ball up. And depending on how fluffed the flour was or how packed the flour was, that really can, uh, that really makes a difference. All right, that is just right. And this recipe came from Warren's mom and she, in her recipe it says form six patties, three eighths inches thick. I have not, I guess I haven't usually done it like that. I always just make two really big patties. Just like pie crust, you want to just kind of tap the edges. I think it makes it look prettier when it comes out of the oven. I have my oven set to 425 degrees. And then just for easy um, breaking when it comes out, it works really well to just cut it. Not, I'm not pushing all the way through though. You 
into just little one inch or thereabouts squares. So now once my oven preheats to 425, I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 10 minutes. And um, yeah, that's it. Just 10 minutes in the oven and then bring it out, let it cool, and break it into little squares. This is unleavened bread. All right, 10 minutes later, and this is what you get. It's just a, it's unleavened bread. I mean, if I'm being honest with you guys, it's not necessarily my favorite. Warren absolutely loves this stuff. He loves to have it during Holy Week. He loves to have it during turkey season <laughs> when he's hunting. Um, but, I mean, I usually like a piece or two. All right, there we go. So that is what unleavened bread looks like. It's got kind of a little bit of a sweetness. It's got a little nutty flavor from the whole wheat flour. I mean, it's good. It's just not my favorite. I just remembered one tip for you. Before it completely cools, loosen it from the pan. I did have my pans greased, but still, you want to just loosen it to make sure that it doesn't um, cool and then stick to your pan. You could line your pans with parchment paper if you wanted to so you could lift it off. I just didn't do that. I was just telling everybody, Maria, that unleavened bread is like okay, but it's not my absolute favorite. What's your What's your verdict? Um, what do you like? Do you like unleavened bread, yes or no? Yeah, I like it. All right, good morning. I'm going to share one more day in the kitchen before I wrap up this video. Uh, today is going to be potato soup for supper. So Maria is actually peeling up some potatoes right now. And normally for Amber's creamy potato soup, what I would do, um, which is just exactly, I always follow the recipe, but not today, of course. Um, I always use the frozen hash brown cubes. However, I don't have that and I'm not going to the store today. So I do have plenty of potatoes so Maria is actually peeling up the potatoes and we're just gonna make creamy potato soup starting with fresh potatoes, which is gonna be just fine. I'll make sure that I cook it a little bit longer, I think, so that I can kind of mash it up a little bit to get that kind of creamy consistency. But she's gonna do the potatoes. And what I'm gonna do is put in some chicken broth. I don't have the cans, but you can use canned chicken broth. You can use homemade chicken broth. So I have one can of cream of chicken soup and then I'm, I'm actually gonna go downstairs and get a quart of canned chicken stock that I have canned up. I'm gonna chop up the onion. I have just like a teaspoon, maybe even a half a teaspoon of the Nord chicken seasoning left here. I'm gonna throw that in as well. I'm gonna put in the black pepper and then it's just waiting to get the potatoes in. Okay, change of plans. I have to use water and soup base because I went down to my canning shelves and I'm out of chicken stock. I have lots of turkey, but no chicken. So anyway, I use the last little bit of the Knorr, which is one teaspoon per cup, and then I'm using Orrington Farms, which is two teaspoons per cup. So I have in my seasonings, and I'm going to add in the water. I still need to add in the pepper and the onion. So I'm gonna add in a half cup of onion now, and this is actually, there's the rest of it, this is actually the last of my garden onions from last year. Well, I have a couple, I have some red onions left. I forget how to put this thing together now all of a sudden. There we go. And then this goes back here. Mom, can you take these eggs? Yep. There we go. Well, this is a... Oh my goodness gracious. <clears throat> like the other times you just go, right, bam, right, you, you go, just pop, bang. You just... Got it a little bit farther. Wow, that is something today. Well, for some reason, this potato did not want to go through. <laughs> Maybe the other ones will be better. 
Maybe the other ones will be better. Do you want right. to try a small one? Yeah, we're going to try a small one. A smallest? Sure. I just thought that maybe this would be a nice way to at least get the lengthwise cubes done, and then I can just run my knife through like this and just get these done. All right, so That's let's see. The smallest one. I think, if I remember right now, let me see. I think I have to, I'm supposed to put it there. Oh, look that at that one. That was so easy. That one was so easy. You want me to put another one in? Sure. Here, load loader up there. Oh. Maybe well, it was just, just a potato. It was something with that first potato. I'm just going to try a big one. Oh, this one. Oh, that one didn't get washed. That one has to go get rinsed. Okay. And then you can do that one if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's cut these. We ones. did it! That's a lot of potato! <laughs> okay, well, this worked out just right. I did not. Um, what? How many potatoes did we have? Seven, maybe? Six or seven? Some were big, some were small. So this looks just right. It's just covered with the liquid, which is just how I want it. I'm going to set this on high, and it's going to go for probably four. Well, let's see what the recipe actually says. The recipe says cover and cook on low for four to six, but I do find that the fresh potatoes need to cook longer than those frozen cubed hash browns. So I'm going to put this on high, actually. We'll check it at four hours and see where we're at. At that point, it might be time to add in the cream cheese. It might not be time. Can I put the lid on? Yep, put the lid on. That look good? Perfect. So now you can open up the bacon, and you might want to put on an apron because there's a tendency to get greasy with, um, with bacon. So I don't have any of those little pouches of the pre-cooked bacon bacon bits. I like to pick those up at Aldi. Quick Trip has bacon on sale, you guys. So I don't know if it's still on sale, but anyway, super priced, $2.49 for 12 ounces. And I did the math. I calculated it out per ounce and checked it according to the great big packages at Pick and Save and Walmart and the 16 ounce packages at Aldi and just all of it. And this was a super deal. So we were stocking up on it when we were going to Quick Trip. So Maria's going to put this onto the baking sheet and she's going to kind of twist it up a little bit. We're going to bake that. We'll let that cool. She'll chop it a little bit later to top our soup. And I'm going to get some oatmeal bread going and this will be for tonight's supper along with the soup. There's so many different breads that that would taste good. I just haven't made oatmeal bread in a long time, and I thought, I'm ready for that. I just need to put in some warm water, salt, let's get a little closer there, honey, butter, quick oats, bread flour, and yeast. Really easy. I always put all the ingredients into my bread pan, set my bread machine to the dough cycle. Your bread machine does not have to be anything special. Look at, my lid is completely busted off, but... It still works and it still does the job, which all I want it to do is to knead the bread and get it through those, that like first big rise. And then I turn it out, I shape it like I want to, bake it up in the oven. Oats, old-fashioned oats works just, just as well. So Maria is just shredding up the cheese for the almost creamy done. potato soup, and you are almost done. Yep. If you don't get down to the end, that's okay. You can eat the cheese, or I will eat the cheese, <laughs> because oh, there she goes. <laughs> Look how big of the pile I made. Oh, it's a huge pile. It's that's, getting stuck because it's so yeah. much. Well, that's perfect. That's going to be just right for our soup tonight.
I had written 2 o'clock to check the soup. It's actually 2.30, so it's a little later than I had hoped. Oh, but this is getting perfect. I can just tell, like I can feel how squishy. Look, when I squish, I suppose it should be on the... I need to move the camera up here, but do you see how it just mushes the mashed potatoes? That's perfect. So I'm going to turn this down to low now because we're not going to eat until probably between 4.30 and 5. A little early tonight because we have church. It's going to be perfect. I'm going to put the cream cheese in. Probably I'll put the cream cheese in. I'm going to write 3.30 on here. So cross that off and write 3.30 for the cream cheese. So unfortunately, I bumped my bread pretty hard when I was putting it in the oven and it sunk way down. It's still going to taste good, but it doesn't look as pretty. And again, I feel like someone's been sneaking the bacon here today. I just chopped it up here and I had just a few chop not chives, but green onions. I have my green onions in a jar. Well, I can just show you here. They've been in here for a long time. I switch out the water about every uh, three days or so, but you can see they're starting to not... I mean, I just trimmed them down so I could get that little bit of onion for the soup. They're not doing that well. It's going to be time probably to pitch those and get some new green onions, use them. Then usually I can keep them going for about, oh, I'd say about three weeks, maybe a month. Thank you for spending another, boy, has it been three or four days in the kitchen with me. And I hope that you guys are getting some value out of these videos. Sometimes I feel like I share and show the same recipes over and over again. But as I've said before, when you know what your family likes, just make that for them because they will be so very, very happy. So anyway, you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'm hoping that I will get this video up here for you on Good Friday. I hope you all have a wonderful Holy Triduum and I hope that Easter is just fantastic and filled with joy. Happy Easter.